on a grey November day, sometimes what you need is a little pick me up. And what we've got here is a little delivery via DHL from making in China. Word on the street is this could well be the sharpest, most all round useful budget lens for Fuji coming out of the third party companies like Makey, Seven Artisans, Newer, Newer, yeah. <laughs> Let's crack it open, see how it feels, then get out, throw up some sample shots, and I'll let you know what I think once I've had a good play with it and hopefully found a bit of decent light. <laughs> Right, let's get into this. Also, don't do this when you're recovering from a heavy weightlifting session. But let's crack it open. Little lens pouch, simple affair. Warranty, good old lens cloth, and the lens itself. As with the 25 1.8, feels absolutely solid looks very similar to and for what it's worth i think the looks are fine absolutely plain simple everything feels just as solid this is the x mount version of course i'd be confident the other mount versions are equally solid nice metal mount there that doesn't look like it's getting damaged in a hurry at all. Yeah, look at that. That's absolutely fine, decent. Take that off. That feels absolutely solid. Not gonna say that again, <laughs> at least in this section. 49 mil thread filter. This is the 35 1.4 of course. Focusing ring feels smooth. You've got the scale right there. Swings round to apparently beyond infinity. We'll see how we get on with that. That's nice. Let's check the aperture ring. That's smooth. It's quite stiff actually. That is a stiff aperture ring and click free. That might be good for you. I'm not necessarily a fan of click free, but I can live without it. And plus I'm gonna be shooting mainly wide open with this thing from one four all the way to two there, 2.8, four. And then after that, you haven't got a lot going on up to F16. There's not a lot of room between there. A little bit unfair, but this is the T3 with the L bracket line up the red dots. So we get this on. Oh, that's a nice solid, fit i don't think oh that is well it's evoking some sounds <laughs> i want to put it on and off <laughs> from me uh from me you might have spent all your money buying the t3 or the t2 or whatever and you want something dead cheap that works and you're happy to go manual well let's take it out shoot a bunch of shots and come back at some point let you know what i think and by some point for you that'll be <laughs> probably a minute down the line in this video right i'm off to have fun with this everything will be shot wide open straight out the camera if you're interested in my jpeg settings there's a video on the channel talking about that anyway enough waffle i want to get out and play with this thing
Well, there you have it. Another solid performer, I would say, from Makey. I want to hear from you, though. And frankly, at the moment, this thing I can't see online now, but it's $119 or roughly the same in pounds. We're going to put a link below as soon as it's live again and see what's up. There's not a lot of information about this lens. Makey sent it along for me to have a look at, and I don't like to put a summary together unless it's out there because obviously we need to know the value. Now that we know that it's about $119, roughly the same in pounds, we won't go into the conversion rate business. I would say it's a very nice lens for the price, especially build quality, very nice, small, compact, easy to throw in the pocket or the bag when you're out shooting, renders the image nicely, no crazy vignetting, no crazy distortion, nothing particularly off-putting. Sometimes the colours render in a softer fashion, which is nice if you're shooting portraits. Obviously, you can tweak that if you're shooting raw. And when I say softer, it's not something to worry about. It just has its own little flavour. It's not too clinical. It's not too overpowering but the images are sharp that's for sure now i shot everything wide open because i'm a wide open freak and you know it definitely worked out for me it was easy to manual focus too especially with the peaking on the fuji bodies there's other options that you can use but i'm into the peaking white highlights that's what works for me very nice barely missed a shot doing that now, would I keep this? Well, I already own a 35.14, so personally, I don't need it. But if you don't want to spend the money on the 35.14 or the F2, which is not a 1.4, obviously, well, it's definitely a great budget performer and, yeah, stands up to the test let's just hope that companies like makey don't start hiking the prices up now that we're finding that their stuff is really quite decent let us know what experience you have with makey lenses for fujifilm or any other brand if you're into that and let us know in the comments below make sure you subscribe hit the notification thing and just get involved below the conversation continues down there